All right, guys, let's walk through what we're going to do for this pressure switch lab. So I need to turn on the air for the room, so I'm going to hit this ball valve here. You don't hear any air moving in the lines because everything's already pressurized throughout the room. Uh, but that is our main shutoff for the air in the room. That goes through a, a dryer here. And then if we look up above, then it goes to a solenoid. You might just be able to make out that the red light is on in the solenoid. So that means that it's energized and it's tied in with the e-stop. So if we kick the e-stop, it will kick out that solenoid and stop the air going around the room. And you can see that the air goes up and the orange tubes go along and it comes down over to, uh, in this case, this unit right here. So there's our first trainer in the room. And you can see that the air goes into the back of the, the regulator there. And we can see that this regulator right now is set for 50 PSI there. Now I'm set up across the room, so let's walk across the room and I'll show you how, what I've got set up there. Sweet. Okay, so uh, first thing we need to do is we need to increase the pressure on this station here, right? So um, I'm going to increase the pressure to about 50 PSI. If this is clicked down, then you can't adjust the pressure whatsoever, right? So you have to lift this up and then you're going to increase the, the pressure up to about 50 PSI here. Beautiful. Okay. At that point, this guy is now 50 PSI and this manifold is at 50 PSI, but we don't have any air coming out. If I take this ball valve and turn it just a touch, you'll hear the air coming out from here. Okay. So at that point, we've got air coming out there. So what I want you to do is I want you to connect up the, the lines. So you're gonna connect up this purple hose here. Let's see if I can set this up so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so what I want you to do is take the, the longer hose and we're gonna take this guy and put it into here. And then what I want you to do is, uh, this guy might be full of uh, some water from some previous labs. So all we're gonna do is we're just going to shoot the air into here, get rid of any uh, water that was in there from previous labs where we may have used this for the lab bolt station. Uh, and you'll see that I have to engage this all the way for the air to come out. Okay. Then what I want you to do is I want you to take the, the precision regulator here. So you can see that my air is off now. Be careful because it is at 50 PSI, so don't be a donkey and put that in your face there. And let's take a look at the, uh, the regulator now. So the regulator is set up here. If we take a look at the, the nameplate on the regulator, you can see that this one's from Siemens. It's a model 4050. So this one will be able to provide us with the maximum of 50 PSI out. Uh, and we're gonna use the 50 PSI from our, uh, from our regulator over there, and we're gonna have it come into this regulator. This regulator is then going to reduce the pressure down to between 25 to 40 PSI. Okay, you'll see that on the back end of the, the unit, there is uh, an arrow there. So obviously you gotta go have the, the air coming in there so we'll have this as the in on the regulator and this as the out. And then you'll see that the, the gauge is gonna show us our output pressure there. So we're gonna take the, the air from the wall there and go into the, uh, the inlet on the regulator. Make sure that it, it actually engages there. Remember, it's, we're gonna pressurize this at 50 PSI. So make sure that it's engaged nicely. Make sure not to hit this tab so it just doesn't fly out and smack you in the face. Okay, so now there, our air is coming into the appropriate side of the regulator. From there, we're gonna have another quick connect tube here, right? So I'm gonna connect up here, make sure that it actually engages with that terminal there. Beautiful. And then from there, we're gonna go into our pressure switch. So I'm just gonna put this down here. I'm gonna have that go into the pressure switch. So this guy is a, a differential pressure switch that you see on uh, like a water pressure line. And on the back end here, we have a, another quick connect there. There we go. So we're just gonna go from the regulator into this guy. And again, we're just making sure that it actually connects up there and engages there, right? Because we're gonna have 50 PSI in this line. And then the regulator is gonna regulate 20 to 40 PSI in this line. So be careful not to tap these guys because they may shoot off and hit you in the face. So make sure it's 
engaged there properly. Okay. Once you've got those guys uh, uh, connected up, then you can pressurize the system. So um, over here, let me just show you. Over here again, I have to engage this ball valve all the way. If I go halfway, then you're not gonna hear yourself think. You have to go all the way, and that pressurizes everything. So now we got 50 PSI in the purple tube, right? Go into the regulator, and then from the regulator, we're then gonna control 20 to 40 PSI going to this switch here. Okay, beautiful. Look, let's look at the, uh, the regulator to see what pressure we've got coming out right now. So it looks like the, the gentleman who was working on here before has left it at 40 PSI. So let's reduce this pressure down to zero, you know, or below 20 PSI. Let's reduce it down to a decent value there. Okay. And then what I want you to do is I want you to uh, connect up the meter to the, the two terminals on the actual, you can't see that, the two terminals on this pressure switch. If we take a look at the, uh, the cut sheet for this guy, which is on the inside of the unit, see if we can focus there, beautiful. Uh, you just might be able to make out that it says uh, that one side has line and one side has motor there. So this guy takes, if you look at the, the values there for the, the single phase, three phase, and DC, Looks like for single phase for 120 volts, it's going to be a, it's good for a hundred one and a half horsepower motor. For 230, it's good for a two horsepower motor. And then it says three phase, but for three phase, you would need to have three different terminals going to the motor, right? It looks like we just have line one and line two there, right? So that's messed up, or it messes a couple of people up in that they think that this is good for a three-phase motor. We can't use it for a three-phase motor because we only have two terminals. So you can feed it from a three-phase source, grab two of the lines from a three-phase source, and at 230, right, which is accounting for any voltage drop, it's also good for two horsepower. You'll also notice there for the DC, like 115 volts DC, that the horsepower is greatly reduced, right? So you'll notice that for DC motors, for this switch, it's only good for a quarter horsepower. Whereas for the single phase, if you had 120, like line and neutral, it's good for a one and a half horsepower motor, okay? So we're gonna connect up to the motor and the line terminals there. So if you connect up to two motor terminals with the meter, then it's just gonna be always on because you're always gonna have continuity. If you connect up to two line terminals, then it's always gonna have continuity. So connect up to one um, motor terminal and one line terminal. So I don't know if you can just make that out here. There we go. So you can see that this top is the motor. So these two terminals are for the motor. And these two terminals right here would be the feed ter terminals or the line terminals. So all I'm going to do is connect up the meter between th those two points because all we're doing is we're looking for continuity there. So we're just going to put the meter leads onto there and we're going to just tighten those bad boys up and then we don't have to hold them for the whole time that we're doing the lab there. Okay, those guys are nice and tight, so that's good to go, okay? And then on the meter, I am on these two terminals here, so I'm on voltage and common, and for this guy, we're just uh, looking at either ohms or at continuity. So if I put it to continuity, then you hear that chirping, right? That's gonna drive you nuts if there's 11 or 12 guys in the class with continuity. So I would keep it on ohms and keep your sanity there. So right now we're at 1.4 ohms. Uh, so that one is basically telling us that the, the switch is closed and we have continuity. We can hear that continuity right there. Okay, so that is basically telling us that we have continuity and it's the same as this annoying sound right here. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to try and set this guy up so that um, so that this pressure switch, this differential pressure switch, kicks in at 20 PSI, or 20, and then kicks out at 40 PSI. Actually, I think I asked you to do 25 and 40. So we're gonna kick in at 25 and kick out at 40. So let's take a look and see whether uh, this guy actually kicks in and out at the value. So what, what I've done is I've taken the, uh, the 
um, these two terminals right here. And all I've done is I've done this before you've gotten into lab. I've turned this numerous times and I've turned this guy numerous times just to screw you up. Okay, so usually from the factory it would already be set up to kick in at 20 and out at 40 and it would be just minor adjustments that you need to make. But I've completely screwed you up. And so this could go really easy or really badly depending on how badly or how much I have changed those two set screws right here. Okay, so those two set screws, if we take a look at the, uh, the cut sheet for this guy again, um, they are going to control uh, our cut in and cut out there. So I don't know if you can see here on, the, on this side right here, on the left hand side, it says turn clockwise to increase both the cut out and the cut in pressure. So that, that really controls the whole range of values, right? That controls, I'll use my fingers here, that controls your bottom end and your top end, right? So by, by changing that potentiometer, you're moving the whole range of values there, okay? If you adjust this set screw right here, it says turn clockwise to increase the cutout pressure without affecting the cut in. So for that guy, it means that uh, you're really gonna control the top end of the range there. So the first set screw on the left-hand side right here controls the entire range of values, okay? So you're moving the whole range of values. Then the one on the right hand side right there, that is where we finesse the top end of the range. And you'll see that in next, like the upcoming labs that it's very similar to doing the zero and the span potentiometers on some units. But this is one of those examples where um, if things like, a, it seems like a simple switch, right? They, you just have two set screws on and those two set screws, if you take a look, the set screws just control the tension on the spring there. So it looks super simple to do, but then when it doesn't work, it's super frustrating, right? So this doesn't work and you can't figure it out. So you go to the bathroom and sit on your phone and try and figure out what went wrong out in the field. And then you come back to where you were looking at, take a deep breath and then work on it a little bit more. So some people will get super frustrated with this and that it doesn't seem to be working properly, but let's walk you through how this guy actually works. So. Let's set up the, uh, the meter here so we can take a look at our continuity. Let's move this guy just up just a touch here. Okay, so right now I have the, uh, you can hear that screaming at us, right? I have the, the continuity there and it looks like with my continuity I'm getting a resistance of like 6.4 ohms, right? So that's just the, the, the terminals of the meter going onto the terminals. Of the, uh, of the switch there. So let's increase the pressure here. So I'm turning the, the regulator here and I'm increasing the pressure and I still have continuity. So that means that the pump is still on and it's still pressurizing the system. And I want it to kick out at 40 PSI. Well, it's still not kicking out. And I increase it to like, oh, that's nice. Okay, so it looks like at around uh, 45 PSI, it actually kicked out, okay? But I wanted to reduce, I wanted to kick out at 40 PSI. So I want to reduce the cutout portion. So I need to adjust this set screw right here and I need to just reduce it by just a bit. So I'm gonna back this off just a touch, okay? That will hopefully reduce my, my cutout part so that it cuts out a little less than, uh, the four, than 45, because I want it to cut out at 40. Now I want it to cut in at 25 PSI. So right now you can see that I don't have any continuity whatsoever. So I'm going to reduce the pressure down. Glare off the lights, super frustrating. So I'm gonna reduce the pressure down, and when it gets to something around 25 PSI, I'm hoping it kicks in. Okay, nothing, it's not kicking in. The pump is not turning on. It's still not turning on. It's still, oh, beautiful, okay? So now it kicks in at 20 PSI, okay? I want it to kick in at 25 PSI, okay? That's super annoying, so let's go back to this. So I can, and you can see here now, it's actually giving us something that looks more like a short circuit there. Beautiful, so I need this to kick in at a higher pressure there, right? So. I need to adjust the whole range of values, right? This guy only adjusts the top end. 
This one adjusts the whole range. So I want to increase the whole range of values. Every full turn, I believe, is about 3 PSI there. So I want to go up just a touch more. Right? I'm, uh, I still have continuity there, so it doesn't, by adjusting that, that set screw, it doesn't change anything right here because it's our, the switch is already kicked in. So let's see what happens when I increase the pressure now because I need it to kick out at 40. Okay, still 40, and it's not kicking out now. Now remember that I adjusted the whole range of values, right? So I need to now adjust the top end, and I need it to reduce down. So reduce down means that I have to go counterclockwise, and I'm just going to slowly turn this until the switch kicks out because I increased the whole range of values, so I have to decrease my cutout point here. I'm just slowly reducing and then, oh, right, right on. So now it's kicked out. So now I don't have any continuity. Okay, so the pump is off, right? So the pump is off, no continuity whatsoever. And I'm gonna reduce the, the pressure again. So it's very similar to the zero in the span in that you have to adjust these things back and forth numerous times to get them to kick in. Let's see when it kicks in again. Need to kick in at 25. That's not kicking in yet at 25 kicked in at like 21 PSI, okay? So it is like watching paint dry in that you have to do these minor adjustments back and forth. But again, I need to increase my cut in. This is the only way I can do that. So I'm gonna increase my cut in just a touch. And by doing so, I know that I have to reduce my cut out portion. So I'm gonna adjust both of the guys at the same time. Now I'm going to increase the pressure again. Okay. Going up, beautiful, now it kicks out at 40. Let's go back down and see whether it kicks out at 25 now. Hey, that's gorgeous, nice. Okay, now I'm gonna walk away from this and leave it for the next 10 years, right? So I wanna make sure that it actually works. So that's super annoying. So I'm gonna go back to ohms, right? So I'm gonna increase the pressure to 40 see if it opens up the line right so pressure is increasing in the system this pressure switch then kicks out come on buddy beautiful it kicks out at 40 and then go back down to 25 and hopefully it'll kick back in beautiful excellent so kicking in at 25 now most of us are overconfident in our abilities right so let's just check this one more time, right? Let's check it three times. So we're gonna increase the, the pressure to 40 PSI. Beautiful, kicks out. And then again, the pressure in the line over a couple hours would then reduce. And once it gets down to about 25, then I need her to kick in there. Beautiful, excellent. So now I have continuity. And the pump is on and will stay on until about 40 PSI. Beautiful. So you can see that uh, with one switch, it can be a pain in the butt in that uh, it's just two set screws, right? How hard could it be? But if I have moved the range too low, I'll completely screw you up and you'll have to bring the range up so you can actually adjust the values. If I move the range way too high, well then it'll never turn off. So you have to reduce the range so you can actually adjust those values. One set screw controls this whole portion, right? So you're moving the whole range of values. So that's this bad boy right here. And then this terminal right here only adjusts the top end of the range there. So hopefully you're cool on what we're doing this week in lab. Uh, you're being careful because you're working with 50 PSI on the incoming pressure there. Uh, and you're bringing lots of patients into the lab because this might not, uh, this has taken us like what, 12 minutes to finish off, I think, but it may take you a good 20, 25 minutes, especially if you get frustrated and start throwing things. Okay, thanks very much guys. We'll see you on the next video. Um, I think next video we're going to uh, work on the, uh, the next lab, we're gonna do the level lab. And I believe I've already done that, uh, that video, so I'll link that one next in the playlist.